Well, it's not every day you get to open two new guitars, let alone two luthier, handmade, uh, bespoke custom guitars. Bespoke custom guitars. These are two John case, many cases with like thumb chisels and all sorts of wonderful things. Okay, wait, let's stop there. This is not the video that I wanted to make. I made a quick unboxing video yesterday of these two guitars that I received and um, I thought I'd capture the excitement of, you know, opening up the guitars, but frankly, I felt like I've done that before when I received my broadcaster, for example, um, and I didn't want to just make a, another unboxing video. Uh, I wanted it to really demonstrate what these instruments mean to me and um, ultimately, this video had been something I'd planned a long time ago before I ordered the guitars, which take a long time to make, sort of six to nine months. And I'd actually visited John when I could last year to see behind the scenes of exactly how these instruments come out of his house. I was gonna make this documentary called uh, The Man Who Makes World-Class Guitars in His Front Room. I mean, you know, it was a bit of a clumsy title. I hadn't really fully worked it out, but I wanted to show everyone this unassuming, modest guy and his uh, his son who works with him and his wife who works with him. And you, you go in their house, beautiful Victorian house, and then you go in the front room, it's got these huge high ceilings, um, lots of nice daylight coming in, and half of it is taken up by this workshop where the interview uh, takes place in, in the bits I'm going to show you. Would you make guitars if you could sell them? Uh, yes, yeah, because I, I play them myself, so uh, um, that's been the incentive from the day one, really, is to um, make a guitar to play. And uh, ultimately to see, you know, somebody play your guitar on stage is, is so gratif gratifying, uh, it's fantastic. And um, you go through to the kitchen, you've got sort of, it's like an array of anatomical parts on shelves, except they're not anatomical parts, they're guitar parts that he's made. Um, you know, there's there's like flying V bodies hanging up in the living room and, you know, necks for things on shelves in the kitchen. And then he's got this sort of machine to, to help make laminate, semi-hollow body shapes and, and whatever um, in the kitchen. You go through the kitchen into the backyard and there are three or four workshop sheds all connected together with uh, various bits of ducting to help suck away the dust and all sorts of stuff. It's amazing, he's got all these parts set out. I um, I was a bit disappointed with myself. I, 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 you know, it was my first ever time trying to shoot something like this. Um, I got a camera setting wrong and didn't realize he had these sort of fluorescent lights in the workshops. So you're gonna see a lot of flickering in any of the footage, unfortunately. But I thought it would be cool just to show you a few minutes of what I took, you know, this didn't turn out to be the project I wanted it to be. But when I started watching that clip at the beginning, I was really not happy with the, the sort of 15 minute unboxing video that I was about to edit and put out just, you know, just sort of throwing it out like that. We'll get to the two new guitars soon. Let's just spend a few minutes basically with John and seeing uh, some of what he does. Um, I, as I said, I wasn't able to capture the whole thing. By now, he's actually moved into a proper studio workshop uh, industrial unit where he can he can spray paint the guitars and everything there so he's got a much bigger setup now and um, he deserves it you know he's been working on this for over 20 years uh, and his guitars are played I might not show you the bit where he talks about who plays them because I don't want to make this too long but you know Josh Smith Ariel Posen um, there's there's quite a few guitarists that actually have case guitars those are the two most sort of well known on YouTube probably so let's dive into I 
I th yes, I think um, the Beatles, seeing them on TV, it was, you know, the sound, the look of the band and the guitars, the way they glinted in the, in the camera lights of the studio, it looks stunning. Have you ever seen a guitar in real life at that point? Um, I think all the, all the guitars I'd seen up to that point had been acoustic guitars, uh, Spanish guitars, so to see an electric guitar it was uh, quite something. I've always made things. Um, my father always made things in the shed. He used to make his own speaker cabinets, but he was a bit of a hi-fi buff. Um, he was always making us toys. So we grew up with um, making things, and they were, my dad was an art teacher. Um, so we were drawing, making, and it was, yeah, part of growing up, I think, was, I think the Les Paul pr predominantly. Um, just loved the shape of it. Uh, and the single cut was just, uh, uh, just a really nice, and the sound of it was it was superb. You know, after um, seeing or hearing Eric Clapton um, in early Cream recordings. Um, How did you go about the first time you even thought about making a guitar? What, what, what sort of propelled you from just thinking it to actually doing it? Um, lack of money, um, because to buy a, a Gibson or a Fender was quite a lot of money, and I was only a, only a student in those days, so. Um, I thought I'd make my own, and uh, I think I think that got me going really. Having a need to have a guitar and wanting something really good, um, I thought I'd make my own. Do you remember your first experiences of making a guitar? What what, um, <clears throat> what did you enjoy about the actual process? Um, yeah, it's a long time ago now. I think I was very impatient. I just wanted to make a guitar, get get it playing. So I don't really remember the the processes along the way. Um, uh, apart from that sensation of first putting the neck into the body, you really feel as though you've got a guitar, you know, it's, um, and then of course plugging in, plugging into an amp and seeing what it sounds like, so um, that's all really exciting. Um, so your first instrument, I mean, <clears throat> where is it now? Have you, have you still got it? My first instrument was a copy of uh, Hofner Galaxy, I don't know where that is, uh, somebody, somebody bought it off me for a few quid. Um, the Flying V I made, I sold. That was, um, I don't know, I've been trying to track that down actually. I'd really like to get, you know, to see that again. Um, uh, but uh, no, I've, I've got one, no, one guitar here, um, a Les Paul Junior double cut, which I made back in the 70s. Uh, but apart from that, uh, yeah, I haven't got any, any left. <laughs> Do you remember most of all the instruments you've made? Um, I th yes, I can remember all the instruments I've made. I'd have to uh, uh, probably refer to my list of customers. Um, but well, I've photographed everything, of course. Um, on every build, I, I, I uh, do studio shots myself of the, of the finished guitar. Um, so I've got a good record of all my guitars. How hard is it to sell a handmade custom guitar? Um, it's uh, it's funny selling a handmade guitar because um, it's built on reputation. I think um, the website's helped a lot, um, but it's the website, uh, guitar reviews in magazines, um, exhibitions, and people people playing them live. Um, it's a long process to get customers, but um, you know, luckily we've got a you know steady flow of um, custom commissions. So um, you know, it takes time, but you know, we sort of settle down to building probably about twelve a year. So um, at the moment, that suits us just fine. Favorite shape of uh, the range that I've designed is um, I don't know if I have a favorite really. Um, I suppose I'm becoming to enjoy playing the the, uh, the hollow, thin line, single cutaway guitars. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, well, the solid, solid bodied single cuts are always great. But um, I don't know if I've got one favourite. Um, the semi solids are nice because you can you can hear them without plugging them in, so you get a sense of uh, you know a nice woody tone without having to put it into an amp, so that's quite nice to, to practice to, yeah. 
how does it feel if you think about how you've made and sold maybe a hundred instruments that could be anywhere around the world, could it being played at any time? How does that feel? Yeah, it feels great to know your guitars are being played um, around the world. It's uh, fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, you'd, and especially on the occasions where we've gone to a gig and seen them being played live is just uh, phenomenal. Um, Which musicians that you might have heard <coughs> of um, have been playing your guitars? Uh, we've... Um, <laughs> right, here we go. Um, we yeah we're lucky enough to have um, well one of my fa one of my influences when I was growing up as a teenager was Andy Powell Wishbone Ash he he owns four of our guitars and uh, we've seen him on several occasions you know playing in Wishbone Ash which is brilliant um, Josh Smith American blues guitarist he's um, got one of our Archtop guitars which he commissioned um, he's a delight to hear play. Um, uh, Ariel Thosson, Canadian guitarist, singer-songwriter, a fantastic player. He's got a gold top of ours. Uh, who else have we got? Okay, I'm sure John doesn't want me to show too much of him talking about which guitarists play his guitars, because ultimately John is an incredibly modest person. I really had to push him to get a lot of this information out of him that I wanted to get. And, um, you know, for me, it's, it's fantastic that he's been making instruments for people that I really, really hold in high esteem as guitar players, Josh Smith, Ariel Posen, people like that. And, and also people that John grew up sort of listening to, as he says. But yeah, I'm sure uh, he wouldn't like it to look like he's just trying to advertise and, and show off, because he really wasn't. If anything, it was just me pushing to try and get this um, information out. You know, I, I love the craftsmanship that he has and really just want to show that to people. So there's a little bit more uh, footage coming up in his workshops and things like that. Uh, I really wish I could have spent another day or two and maybe I will in future to get the full process. Um, but I'll just show you what I can and then I'm going to not unbox but show you the guitars that John has made for me. Kurt Fletcher? Uh, Kurt Fletcher hasn't got one of our guitars, no. Um, but I'm working on it. <laughs> You yourself, <clears throat> when did you learn to play the guitar? Um, I learnt playing guitar probably when I was 10, 11, and I bought my um, Burt Whedon Plain A Day book, which everyone did in those days, and uh, learnt Bobby Shafto. <laughs> um, and I had a friend up the road who's also a really good, uh, now um, a luthier, makes beautiful jazz guitars, Andy Crockett. We used to... Um, he used to show me things he'd learnt on the guitar, so um, it wasn't long before I was playing, um, oh, the Animals song, um, House of the Rising Sun. Uh, so, you know, learnt from books and listening to friends play. Um, and it, obviously slowing down records and playing uh, by ear from, from a record uh, was another way of doing it. Back then when you were learning, were you already starting to imagine you might make, make something? Um, I suppose when I was learning, um, I think I'd made my first really rough guitar, um, uh, which was, wasn't really playable, but it was, at least it was a start. Um, so I always had, had it in my mind to make, make guitars, yes. Um, yeah, my friend Andy, he, he used to make guitars and used to hack out bits of plywood and bolt them all together so um, you know we kind of grew up together you know making guitars. So how much better does a guitar compared to making one out of plywood making it with the real materials does it, how much of a difference does that make? Yes I think that does make a difference when you're starting to uh, use you know good quality mahogany and maple and rosewood um, and using the right uh, pickups you do start to get you get the tone that you've heard in your dreams and uh, heard on record. So it really does does work. There's a, a bit of a debate really uh, on the internet as to whether it's the pickups or the wood, uh, or the de design, whether it's semi-hollow, whatever it is. What are your opinion as of someone who makes these instruments? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's, it's a combination of the guitar construction, uh, the woods and, and the pickups. So, um, because the same pickups can sound totally different on a different 
constructed wood made out of uh, guitar. Um, so it's, it is a blend of all three, you know, the construction, the woods and the pickups. Um, well, that's what I've found, yeah. Uh, do you think a lighter guitar is more resonant? That's f f yeah, it's funny. Um, some light guitars are incredibly resonant and some heavy guitars are resonant. So um, I think it's, it's probably down to the density of the wood, um, which you can, you get a sense of the density of the wood. When you pick it up, you can feel the sound of it. When you can brush your fingers across the wood, um, you, you know if it's resonant or not. So um, uh, yeah, each piece of wood varies, but you only know when you, you pick it up and you can kind of feel feel what it's going to sound like. So how did you actually learn to make a guitar pro professionally? Um, did you go to a college? Or I, I was self-taught. Um, uh, I mean, woodwork at school was amazing. We used to, you know, learned all the joints. And um, really, if you know the woodworking joints, it puts you in good stead for building a guitar. But the rest I picked up from friends and reading books, but mainly um, copying guitars and, and actually building them. Okay, well I hope you found that interesting, but now I really, really can't wait to uh, sort of show you the guitars that John has made for me. I was incredibly lucky um, to be able to, to get him to make uh, a couple of guitars, or a few guitars really. One of them has been custom made specifically for me, the other two I actually picked out of his uh, stock that was already made because I fell in love with two of his J1s, that is the, the single cup guitars. Um, one of them I've had for a, a while now, that's the 59 reissue, which um, if you've been on the channel before a few times you, you may have seen it around. But the, the other one uh, which I've just received is a gold top with P90s. Now if you go back to a video I made at John's where I demoed some of his guitars, this gold top with P90s was an absolute dream for me. Um, I couldn't decide on the day whether to get the one that I got, the reissue, or to get this um, gold top. I couldn't take both then, so um, I, I actually got John to make another gold top um, and then uh, because he wanted to have one in stock and then we've decided that I'll take the, the one that I originally loved. Um, I would have loved the other one as well, I haven't had a chance to play that one, the one that he's made uh, just recently. Um, so we'll go and have a look at the gold top and then I want to show you the real piece that um, I've been sort of dreaming about for years and years and years um, and we'll get there in a minute but let's go and look at this gold top first. I'm a big fan of gold top guitars. Uh, if you're not, uh, you know, a guitar lover, this is gold top, self-explanatory. This was a finish that was, you know, sort of created in the early to mid 50s, I think 1953 and four, when the first Les Pauls came out, they, they were in this finish and what a finish it is. It's uh, glorious to behold and gorgeous to look at when you're playing and when you put it on the wall or <laughs> wherever. Um, what I love with what John's done here is he's, accurately managed to create a relic. A relic guitar is one where someone has aged it for you. Now, there is a, a big debate in the guitar community as to whether that's that's good or not. Um, I've got a mix of guitars, pristine and relics, and I like them both. What I love about this is this green that you get on here is something that happens from many, 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 many hours of playing and sweating and it somehow reacts with the gold and creates this green. Now, I probably couldn't have played this guitar enough to create that myself. It would take many years. And um, call me cheat, a cheat, but <laughs> I wanted it to look like that already uh, because I just love that. And John's attention to detail is incredible, as I've seen with his other guitars as well. From the way he finishes it in the relicking to the materials he picks and everything, but more than anything, which I think I've not really talked about much before, is the playability of his instruments. Um, in doing what I do on YouTube, demoing equipment, 
you know, people expect you to sort of have, um, you know, perfect sort of tuning and everything every time. With a lot of my instruments, that's not possible. Even if the guitar is in tune, the intonation, which is basically as you play up the fretboard, it affects, depending on how it's set up with the neck curve and everything, you know, it can affect the tune of the guitar and it can sound out of tune even when it's not. And I press quite hard. John's instruments are set up by someone who plays him, who created the instruments because he wanted to play. So the feeling of the neck, the weight of the guitar, which is not too heavy, they're pretty light instruments, uh, and that amazing setup that he does uh, is something that makes it an absolute joy to play. Um, you know, this feels like a guitar that I've been playing for years and I've only had it for two days. So I'm really, really happy about that. <clears throat> um, this, these pickups are wonderfully sort of powerful pickups. This, what we call P90s, they're a single coil pickup. Um, I'm not going to go into too much explanation, but essentially what came afterwards for, for the, the Les Paul was the humbucker, which stopped the hum you get through your amp. The P90 is a pretty noisy pickup. I think it went out of favor for a long time, but now people realize that having that lower output than the humbuckers, it doesn't roll off so much of the top end sound as, as you might say. So it, you get this lovely, bright, clear sound, but these are quite high output P90s and they can really wail and scream. And I love that about it. And John's instruments I found, he's got clearly got this sort of wicked streak in him because he, he comes across as so you know quiet and unassuming but his guitars really all have a massive punch to them. <laughs> that's where the expression comes through from the person you get to make your guitar. He decides they're going to be incredibly beautiful looking guitars, finishes to die for, and yet when you plug them in and play, people are going to notice because of the sound they make, and I love that about it. So this gold top is one of my favourite ever guitars that I've come across, um, and I'm going to love and cherish it, but I really want to show you the other instrument that he's created for me, which is created from a collaboration between him and I as to what I wanted. Uh, so I'm going to go and get that, and um, I'm really, really, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of awestruck by this instrument, and I'm going to explain why. <laughs> This is John's version of, of a Strat. A Strat guitar is one shaped exactly, pretty much like this. I said to John that I wanted to get a vintage Fender Stratocaster. Um, Fender and Gibson were the sort of uh, first big names in the guitar world. They created the form, essentially. Fender first with the Broadcaster and Telecaster guitars and Gibson with earlier hollow body guitars and then onto the Les Pauls. But the Fender Strat, which came around later in the 50s, second half of the 50s, for me, this is the instrument that I first fell in love with. Um, yeah, the first guitar I ever had was, was the Strat. I still have it. And um, I was in a shop last year sometime playing a few vintage Strats from the early 60s. And I said to John that that's what I really would want. And I, I couldn't afford to spend 20 to 40 thousand pounds on one. And John and I spent some time coming up with the exact specs that I would want. Uh, the finish was really important to me. I love this three tone sunburst finish. John looked at a lot of pictures that I sent him and is essentially 
come up with, for me, the perfect burst, exactly as I want it to. Just enough luster in the finish, but not too shiny, you know. He hasn't really relicked this one. He's given it a little bit of what, like finish checking, as it might be called, where the, the finish just has some cracking, which would happen naturally over time. Then we went into the shape of the neck and he's created this um, V-shaped neck. I wanted something I could really dig into. And um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, who's a player who played a guitar with a, a burst and um, you know an idol to many guitar players, especially guitar players who love the Stratocaster. Um, I wanted something beefy like he might have had. Um, so we ended up with this incredible, incredible neck. It feels somewhat similar to the vintage ones, but just with a bit more comfort there. So it's got a slightly softer shape uh, in the V. Uh, again, the intonation and the tuning are exceptional. The attention to detail and John managed to get his hand on some um, pickups from JW Restoration, which are, I haven't shown off the full range. This isn't a tonal demo today. I'm gonna do that in a future video, but really beautiful, glassy, pristine tones when you want them to be and pretty high output for single coils when you need them to be. So this mini documentary video is not really about me playing, not really about even my guitars. I just wanted to show you, you know, what someone can be capable when they when they put their mind to it and they have a need to create something for themselves and, you know, luckily for us, for other people. And John's instruments are serious, serious instruments. feel like it's made just for you so um, yeah I'm in love with this with all of the guitars that he's made for me because they feel like they're ready to be played and they sound great so what more could you want so yeah this is my case guitars strat basically <laughs> and if you want to see more about this one and the gold top uh, I'll be making videos about those so you can go ahead and watch them when they come out later um, I hope you've enjoyed this this little sort of documentary. I, I, as I said earlier, I didn't get into as much depth um, with John as I wanted to. Time just ran away and the world <laughs> started to fall apart. And um, for me, it's been a great thing to have uh, this project going on with John making the guitars and, and for me to be playing all my other guitars. It's something that um, I find great solace in and, and these instruments, you know, will become a cherished part of of my time really, because I spend a lot of time playing. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, that I've done case guitars justice today. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.